Hey everyone, so this is a video that I've been wanting to make for a while, all about my MAC eyeshadow collection. The reason being that um, I know if you're somebody that's just starting out collecting MAC eyeshadows, or you've been collecting for a while and you're kind of stumped on what to get next, I always find it, you know, being in that situation, I always find it really helpful to watch other people's uh, eyeshadow collection videos and see which ones they've picked out and what they have to say about them because when you go to MAC either the store or online it's so overwhelming the amount of choice in terms of color and finish and it just can be really daunting so um, I've actually grouped mine in the order in which I purchased them because it just makes it easier for me to kind of explain you know my choices and explain how the collections kind of evolved over time. Um, I've been collecting MAC eyeshadows for about two years now and I have in that time I've managed to get 15 of them so I have one one pro palette full. Yeah so my first MAC purchase was online. Um, I think my choices were pretty heavily influenced by what I'd seen on YouTube and kind of some of you know the more hyped colors that I just thought, you know, were must-haves. So one of the first four that I bought was All That Glitters, which is, I believe it's a Voluxe Pearl, so it's kind of got that pearly, shimmery finish to it, and it's just a really, it's kind of a golden peach color, I would say. Um, I've used this one quite a lot, but um, not so much lately, I think because I've found other colors that are similar to it, but which I actually like better. Um, a perfect example being something like Sin from Urban Decay, which is a really similar kind of, you know, kind of shimmery nude color, but way less orangey. If you're fair skinned, I do find that all the glitters can skew a little bit too orange, so I kind of have to be careful about how I use it and what I pair it with. So, yeah, this is one of the ones that I think is a little bit overhyped, and for my skin tone and my coloring, I think there are better options out there. So if I had it to do over, I probably wouldn't have purchased that one again. Um, also, another really hyped shade that I'd seen um, mentioned on YouTube time and time again was Sketch. So this was another one of the first ones that I picked up. It's this really, really dark, plummy, red-based purple. It's kind of got little flecks of red in it. I believe it's a velvet. And something about this color, I thought it would look really good on me, but and it can depending on how I use it, but sometimes like if I try to put it, you know, in the crease or across the lid, it can end up looking a bit muddy on my fair skin and I'm not too crazy about that so I end up using it a lot either as a liner or just to deepen the very outer corner if I'm doing kind of a purple purple toned smoky eye so I do use that one but I'm not uh, super crazy about it I think it's a little bit overhyped um, also in that first batch I got antiqued this one I don't know, I don't think this one gets quite as much attention or quite as much love, at least not here on YouTube. It's a really, uh, it's a, it's another Velux Pearl, so again, I really love the finish of these, and it's kind of a mid-tone, uh, coppery brown. Definitely very red-based. Um, I really don't wear this one that much, and I don't know why, because every time I swatch it, I realize that I really do like it. Um, it's a really, really pretty color. I think it really makes blue eyes... Yeah, or green eyes probably too, really stand out. And then finally, from the last shade that I picked up in that first batch was Brulee. Now this is kind of a boring color, certainly not the most exciting one in my collection, but I use this so much as a base color or as a matte highlight. It just matches my skin tone so well. It's basically just a matte cream color. Um, I think it's classified as a satin, but it really doesn't have any of the uh, satiny shimmer. It's, it goes on really pretty matte. So yeah, really boring but super functional and I end up using it a lot. What I like about it is that it's got a very smooth texture. It's not chalky. So many of these matte, you know, flesh tone colors, especially from a lot of the lower-end drugstore palettes, they tend to be really 
dusty and chalky and when you put them on you end up looking like you've got this just a ton of powdery product sitting on the skin and I'm not a fan of that so I tend to reach for Boulay. My second MAC purchase was actually from a MAC counter. Um, I was in Montreal and picked up a couple at a MAC counter there and this time uh, there were two colors that I got and I knew like going into the store which ones I wanted. They were kind of on my wish list and one of them was Shale because I had seen it in one of Carmen D, the makeup artist from, from What Not To Wear, one of her books. She had mentioned this as being a really good color for blue eyes and I had seen the picture of it in her book and on the blue eyed model and just thought it looked so pretty. I've been wanting to get it for a while, finally did. It's a satin and it's kind of a hard color to describe. It's like a pur mid-tone purpley gray. It's, yeah, satin, so it's got that shimmer, and um, it does kind of really enhance blue eyes in a way, but I think um, a lot of people could really get a lot of use out of this shade. It's just really one of the more kind of unique colors. It's almost got sort of, I mean, some lights it looks purple, and some lights it looks gray. It's kind of got almost a taupey quality to it. I don't, I'm not very good at describing these <laughs> shades, I'm sorry, but that's, that's what it looks like. Um, and I end up using that one a lot, sort of, you know, I, it'll get layered in if I do a purple smoky eye or if I want kind of a, want to add just like a little bit more depth and color to a more charcoal smoky eye. There's lots of different ways you can use that one. I really like it. Um, and the other one that I picked up um, at that time at the counter in Montreal was Club. And this one I got completely because I had seen seen it featured in a Pixie Woo video as one of, you know, one of their product of the month type videos and it's um, a really popular shade because it's pretty unique. It's it's a brown, like a mid-tone red based brown with green pearl running through it and so depending on how the light hits it, it can look green or brown and it makes a really really awesome smoky eye. So I do really like that one and I like the effect of it and I do use that one quite a bit. Let's see, my third, so that was my second time purchasing from MAC, just those two from the MAC counter in Montreal. And then my next purchase was again from the website and so what I ended up getting was one of my favorites which is bronze. It's a frost it's quite strong the pigmentation on the frosts and quite metallic and this I reach for this one when I really want the color of my eyes to be the focus of the look because it just really sets them off and I think it's because it's you know the shimmer in it is almost a little bit orangey but it's not so orange that it clashes with my skin tone it's just enough to really um, complement the blue without looking, you know, garish or anything like that. And I really like the texture and pigmentation of the frosts. Um, what else did I get in that batch? I got another Velux Pearl. This one is called Twinks and it is a kind of, I guess it's a plum. Nice mid-tone shimmery plum. Kind of a warm color and it's another one that really looks good on blue eyes really like the texture of the finish. I use that one quite a lot. Then I got Dazzle Light, which is a, another Velux Pearl. It's kind of a shimmery cream color. It's almost got a little bit, uh, the camera probably won't pick this up, but in certain lights there is a little hint of a pink tone to it. Almost, not quite a duochrome, but just in certain lights you'll be able to see that there's a, just a hint of pink to it, which was a bit of a surprise to me because you don't see that in the pan at all. It just looks more like kind of a creamy, buttery sort of color. But yeah, there is a hint of pink to it in certain lights. And I use this a ton as a highlight color because I like that it's not too, like it's got that nice pearly shimmer to it. You get a nice sheen on the skin, but it's not too frosty. I don't like having the color under the brow that's super glittery or frosty and this one's really really nice texture so I use that a lot as a highlight color. Then two colors that are again 
maybe more on the boring side, but that have just turned out to be really functional. One of them being print, which is, well, I mean, it really is like the color of newsprint. Like if you've been reading a newspaper and you get the ink on your fingers, that's kind of the color of this. It's um, just kind of a sort of a charcoal with almost a hint of a blue undertone. And it is a satin, I believe. So it does have a teeny tiny bit of shimmer on it, but when you apply it to the skin, it comes across pretty matte. Um, this is just a really functional color. If you like smoky eyes, or if you're looking for kind of a deeper color to give you some definition, but you want something that's a little softer than black, this is perfect. And then this is a color that I highly recommend, and it's Copper Plate which is a mid-tone matte gray. I believe it's from the matte squared line. And I, it seems so boring, but I can't tell you how hard it is to find a really good sort of true gray that's not shimmery, that's not like silver or charcoal, but just a true gray. And this one is perfect. And if you're, again, into wearing smoky eyes and you want that kind of mid-tone color, maybe to blend through the crease, just a really nice true gray that's um, not shimmery or frosty, this one is great. And the matte squares have a really, really nice texture. They're really smooth, they really blend nicely, and they have good color payoff. Then, my next purchase was from a MAC store. I went to Toronto and I was actually there to buy some MAC stuff for Nicole for Christmas last year and I ended up picking up one for myself, one eyeshadow, and that is Sable. And this one I probably never would have purchased if not for having seen it firsthand in the store because I was like looking over the eyeshadows trying to pick out the ones I thought Nicole would really like and something about the way the light was hitting this one just really caught my attention and I'm like ooh what is that color and I picked it up, looked at the name and I'm like, Sable? Because I'd read about Sable on the MAC website and it just seemed like such a boring color that it really didn't stand out to me. It's a hard color to describe. It's kind of a reddish sort of, um, I don't know, it's kind of a red brown with, but it, in certain lights it can look like a plum. It's a frost, so again, it tends to look really different depending on how the light hits it. It's got a very metallic finish. Um, it's really, really similar to, if you have the Urban Decay Naked palette, it's really, really similar to this color Toasted, just for comparison's sake. Um, and it's... Um, because it's so red, it can be a little bit tricky to wear, depending on your skin tone. I imagine that people with like medium to deeper skin tones would look phenomenal with this. I end up usually using it either, um, either like to blend out a smoky eye or I'll layer it over top of something else. And the interesting thing about this color is it works with so many other shades. Like, I've tried this in a ton of different combinations and have yet to find you know, a combination that didn't work. It just seems to go really well with everything, either layered over top or using it as a blending color. So yeah, that's become one of my favorites out of all the ones I have, and I never would have picked it up had I not just happened had it not just happened to catch my eye when I was in the Mac store shopping for someone else. <laughs> and my most recent Mac purchase, and one of them is that I got is Blackberry. I love this color for a smoky eye. It's a mid-tone plum, but it's a cool plum. Because the other plummy colors that I have from MAC tend to skew more on the warm side. This one is much more cool, kind of bluey purple. Then I got Quarry, which is another color that's kind of tricky to describe. It's sort of a... I would say it's in the taupe family, I suppose. I don't know if this one will really show up on camera because it's a little bit more more of a muted color, but it's kind of it's kind of gray, it's kind of brown, it's kind of pink. <laughs> it's kind of somewhere in between all of those, but it works really, really well as just a really subtle color to define the crease, and it's another one of those ones that you can pair with lots of different 
color combinations and it comes out looking great so I use that one a ton as a crease color. And last but not least I got Foley which is just a matte red brown color. Fairly intense or it can be if you build it up quite a bit. Looks like that. This one was one that I kind of debated off and on for a long time about whether or not to get it and I'm glad that I did because it really does um, set off my eye color and I think it looks really flattering and it also pairs really nicely with some of the other shades that I have. You know if I layer on this color as a base and then go over top of it with something more shimmery. Um, I've tried it with Sable and it looks really good. I've used it with Twinks to get kind of a really deep red plum smoky eye that I really really like. And um, it also works pretty well with Antiqued. But hopefully this video, you know, maybe gave you some ideas about ones you might like. If you've got coloring similar to mine, um, I've tried to point out ones that I think are particularly flattering. And as well as pointing out some ones that um, maybe you've never seen before, or haven't seen talked about very much here on YouTube. And um, yeah, happy shopping and I'll see you in the next video.